right, gang, and welcome to Isometric Drawing. Now, before we get started, I will be the first to tell you I am not the best at isometric drawing. I don't do a lot of it, but as this is the complete guide to Affinity Designer, I wanted to show you how you could use it. You know who is good at this? Comic book artists and architects. But let's go ahead and get started, and I'm even going to show you how to use a feature of 1.7 to kind of draw on a plane. So, let's go to View, and the first thing you're going to do, you're going to go to Show Grid. Now, if yours doesn't immediately come up like this, the way you get there is you come up to the Grid and Axis Manager, and you're going to go to the Advanced tab, and from the drop down, you're going to choose Isometric. Now, I'm going to do a 2 by 1 Isometric. That's a ratio, 2 by 1. And it's got spacing of 100 pixels. And let's go ahead and close. All right, now we got something that looks like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in. And now, my way of doing this might be a little different than yours. You can do it a hundred different ways. I'm going to start with my pen tool. And I'm going to go four rows across. And I'm going to go four rows down. And then I'm going to go four rows across. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to go four rows up. Boom. That's how you make a square. Now let's go ahead and just fill this square real quick. I'm just going to use a placeholder color. I'm going to fill it in with yellow. All right. Now let's make another shape. I want this box to be a little off round, or I should say a little off square. So I'm going to go about six in, and I'm going to go the same four down. One, two, three, four. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to join that node. And I'm going to join this node. And I'm going to join that node. Perfect. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to fill this in with a similar color. These are just placeholders, by the way. And now, I'm going to create my other curve. And this should be pretty easy for you, right? Four by five. Okay. And now, if you're not getting these lines that I'm getting, make sure your snapping is on. To turn snapping on, turn on the little uh, magnet there. All right, and let's go ahead and fill this one in dark orange. All right, cool. There is my box in isometric view. Now, here's the thing. The next thing you want to do is you want to think about your light source. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my light source coming down from this side. Now, when I do that, the way that I think about this working is the light source is going to come down, and I'm just going to draw this out with an arrow. You don't have to. The light source is going to be striking on this side of the box right here. Right? So I'm going to actually move the light source over to here so that it's coming down this way. So what I want to do, I'm going to use a gradient fill. So I'm going to start with my lightest side. That helps me get my tones right. So this is where I'm going to be striking the most. I'm going to go to Fill, I'm going to go to Gradient, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose this gradient, let's say, I think that's pretty good. Oops. I come down to my Gradient tool, and I apply it. So notice how I'm following the grid, and now if it's a little bit heavy, you can always click on here. And let's go ahead and change that color up just a little bit, make it a skosh lighter. All right. And this color here, this brown, let's make it the same darkness, but let's go ahead and make that a little bit more orangish. All right. Good deal. All right, so this face, this face is really going to be devoid of light, so I really want this color. So how do I fill with that color? I come over to the gradient tool, I find that color, and now I just fill the face, just like that. Boom, problem solved, problem staying solved. Now this color here, we're going to want a gradient similar to here. So let's go ahead and grab the fill. Let's grab our color picker tool. Let's grab this color here, and let's fill it that. Okay. Now, we go to Gradient. And now, with our Gradient tool selected, we're 
come down just like this. Now, I think that because we want the inside of the box to show, we're going to go just like that. And this corner is going to be the most devoid of light, let's say. All right. That works because this surface would be keeping all the light from getting over here. This surface would be a little bit brighter. All right, so that's a start. Now, that's not perfect. What we need to do now, we need to make an inside of the box because these faces here don't have any depth. So we come back to view, we kick our grid back on, we grab our pen tool, and now the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna replicate this square. Now, you could have replicated the plane. I'm gonna do it this way, well, because I'm the one teaching it. And now, I'm gonna just pull in with the node tools, kind of unscientifically. Okay, now you see snapping is causing a problem now. I'm gonna turn snapping off. Now, I can adjust these freely. Right. Now you can adjust these any way you want. I know that there's some snapping formulas you can do there. I'm just gonna do it this way. That's gonna give me this outer shell of the box. And now I'm gonna gradient fill this thing. And again, I'm gonna gradient fill it the same way that we did before. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna click on the gray. Make that a little dark. Come over here. I'm going to find this darker color. And I'm going to make that the darker color. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now let's see what it looks like without the grid. So we click off show grid. All right, we need to make some adjustment. That's fine. Come over to your node tool. and adjust the nodes out until you're relatively happy with what you've got. Yep, all right, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of our light for right now. That looks like a pretty good box. Let's go ahead and drag this down and group. All right, cool. Now, let's go ahead and make a table for it to sit on. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and make this table. I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna fill this solid. You can make the table any color you want. I'm gonna do something that's semi-brown, but definitely darker than what I'm working with. And I'm gonna put the box on the table. Okay just like that. All right, now, what do we do about the shadow, right? Because the light is still coming down. We come back to our grid. Let's go ahead and show grid. Let's turn the snapping back on. Grab our pen tool. And now, where should this thing start? One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill this black. Now that doesn't look right, does it? We come over with our move tool, we drag it down underneath. Let's go ahead and kill the grid. And now we can move this wherever it makes sense. Okay, I think we're pretty good there. Let's go ahead and apply an effect. We're gonna apply a Gaussian blur. Kick that box up a little bit, just like that. And now let's go ahead and drop the blend mode down a little bit. Looks good. All right, now if we wanna play with it a little more, we can always grab the two groups, grab the corner, holding shift, and we can adjust the size of them both. Now, you'll see where you place the shadow. 
it makes a difference in how the viewer sees the box. So I would highly recommend that you place the shadow this corner very close and a little ways back from that box because if you move it too far out what happens now it's floating in space it doesn't look right so line it up with the side give it a little bit of bleed over and I think that you're in pretty good shape right about there all right now if you wanted to you could even go up a little ways that actually looks even better all right let's go ahead and group these two group and now we can move them as a unit on the table all right the last thing we're gonna do because this is getting a little bit long let's go ahead and place a heart in the plane because this is a new 1.7 feature I don't know where you found us in the evolution of affinity but this is a feature we'd all been waiting for now if you grab this heart and you try to put it on the box that doesn't look right you can try to shear it you can try to move it it doesn't look right Control Z to undo that. There's a new tab here. We're gonna come down to Studio. We're gonna come down to Isometric. And now watch this. If you have this heart, click on Fit to Plane. Now that doesn't look right, does it? Notice here, you can enable planes and it will give you three different planes here. So we're gonna enable it and fit it to the front. Boom, just like that. Now, when you size it, look at that. It keeps the perspective on the plane. This is huge. This is a huge win for us. I love it. I think that it's a huge, great feature in 1.7. And the last thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna go down to File. We're gonna bevel this bad boy. And we're gonna crank that bevel up. And there we go. I think we got a pretty good isometric three-dimensional box done in Affinity Designer. All right, folks, love to see what you made there. Hope you learned a little bit from this lesson. Let's go ahead and get into the next ones here in Affinity Designer.